All right, everyone. It's Friday. Celtic are back tomorrow at Celtic Park. How many hours to go, Ryan? Do the maths quickly. No pressure. Can we do maths in the morning? Never mind any other time. Twenty nine. Um, absolutely. I believe. I've done twenty nine in my head. Is that right? Is that right, Tony? Twenty nine. Yep. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Indeed. Ten at the moment, kick off at three, that's five hours, add on the twenty-four, Ryan, that's twenty-nine. Uh how are we guys? Are we are we excited for the game this weekend? Yeah, it feels as if we you know, we're really previewing games due to them being once a week at the moment. Um so you're getting the biggest or or the most elongated previews known to man. But yeah, I'm looking forward to, to all, all the all the games as they come around. St. Martin will bring their own challenges, but you know, it's a home game. It's the first home game in, what is it, a month? So looking forward yeah. to getting back to Celtic Park and um, hopefully getting back to winning ways as well. Tony? Can't, can't wait. Chance to apply a bit oh. of pressure, as they say. Got to go and take that and uh, use it to your advantage. And I think, as we've been speaking about all week, I think Celtic are, are hitting a good place. And, yeah, I think, uh, I think something special could happen tomorrow. In terms of oh. the fans and the atmosphere and just Celtic coming out the traps. I like it. Maybe we'll delve into that a little bit later in the video, but I like it. Um, right, we are thrilled to have Weissman, who are a global leader in the boiler industry, sponsor this podcast. And to make things even more exciting, they've teamed up with MPH Boilers, Scotland's very own award-winning installation team. That makes it a match made in heaven. Weissman's Boilers are engineered to deliver not just warmth, but unparalleled efficiency and reliability. We're talking about cutting-edge technology that saves you money on energy bills and reduces emissions. And as you know, with MPH Boilers, you're getting service from the best, a local team, uh, when you choose a Weissman boiler installed by MPH, you'll also get a free internet controller and they're offering the first year service free. So this is your big chance to get world-class engineering with Weissman and MPH boilers. Uh, check them out and take your first step towards a warmer, more efficient home. Uh, offer time, Ryan. Yep, it's offer time. Uh, six months of access for a for a single pound on the Celtic Way website. We thank everybody that's joined us so far. Your QGO prints will be sent to you very, very soon. The terms and conditions had a wee look and it's within 30 days you'll receive your QGO print. So the first 250 odd are getting are getting dealt with just now and then the rest will follow. So six months of access plus a free Kyogo print as we spoke about. www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. If you get on there early, you'll be on there until the middle of October with all of your Celtic news, Celtic analysis, Celtic opinion. And this weekend there'll be match ratings as well as instant analysis. So please check out that. Um, thank you to everybody that sponsored us, or not sponsored us, thank you to everybody that's subscribed to us so far. Um, and when we hope we can get a, a few more people in before our before our offer finishes. Yeah, big thanks to everyone who's uh, got on board so far. Uh, what kind of stuff can they read about, Tony? Well, I'll just flick this up. This was my own from yesterday. I was talking about Adamida and Paolo Bernardo, and I was saying if Celtic can cut deals for them and they're available at the right price, then they should have a go at signing them both. Ryan's put up a, a column today, haven't you, Ryan, an opinion piece today about roller coasters and all sorts, haven't you? Yes. Basically, I was using the words of uh, a lot of people call Brendan Rogers box office Brendan for maybe some of the yeah. stuff that he says in the media um, and some of his results that he gets, both good and bad. It's very much a roller coaster when you're on on the Brendan Rogers bus or the Brendan Rogers roller coaster. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying whether it's going to be a smash hit or a, or a box office flop at the end of the season, depending on what he wins. Um, two trophies up for grabs, hopefully he can win the two, and it would still be viewed as a very, very decent season, given the circumstances oh. surrounding injuries and him coming back. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's going to be a pressure-filled few months for him, and hopefully he can come out of it the other end with, a, with two more trophies in the trophy cabinet has. Yeah, if we win a double this season, I mean, we'll, we'll all be so, so happy. Uh, and, you know, eight wins, it's a, it's a big ask, but, you know, that's that's what the ask is. Uh, big expectations, right? We've got a bit of chat, obviously, about the game tomorrow. 
a little bit of uh, training ground insight from a, a few different sources about players who may or may not be available. First of all, guys, and it's already been brought up by Dennis, uh, the Scotland's lost its automatic place for the, the Champions League. Now, this was confirmed last night after Victoria Pultsen drew 0-0 with Fiorentina. That took Czechia, a.k.a. the Czech Republic, over, the, over Scotland in the coefficient rankings inside the top 10. And uh, it means that next season's Premiership champions will not go straight into the, the Champions League proper. They'll go into qualifying, the last round of qualifying, the playoff round. So if we win the Premiership next year, we'll have one tie to win to get through to, well, it's not the group stage anymore. It's the, the league phase they're, they're going to be calling it from next season. This doesn't affect next season at all in terms of like this season's champions still will go straight into the Champions League so we can kind of rest easy with regards to that. But a lot of kind of negative headlines about this. For me, guys, it was it was always going to happen. I mean, this is what happens with countries the size of Scotland. They have a few years of an automatic place, performances dip, and then you lose it. And then in a few years' time, we'll, we'll get it back. Do you guys think it's anything more severe than that? Are you more worried about it than I am, Tony? No, we just seem to ride the crest of a wave for the few seasons as automatic qualifications. And then, as you say, results kind of dictate what happens with Scottish teams, doesn't it, in terms of their coefficient. And, uh, yeah, I, I I just thought a lot was being made out of it. But if, you, if you're if you one to study the coefficient rankings and stuff, you would have known this anyway. This this isn't yeah. something that was, that was sprung on you. You know, they don't just say, right, you can have a, a an automatic... Uh, place in the Champions League group says he's for a couple of seasons and then we whip it off you. It's all down to results. It's saying if you if you follow these tables and a lot of people do and there's a lot of uh, cracking uh, social media sites on there that put in the picture with these things. So you're you're very aware of it. But yeah, and it gets back to yeah, yeah of course Scottish clubs have to do better in Europe. They get that. But you know that, that it's how difficult it is to keep earning that automatic spot. No results get you automatic spots, obviously, with the coefficient points. And uh, Celtic have struggled to get results. Let's not kid ourselves on with that in Europe. So, yeah, the winners will enjoy it this season. The winners of the Scottish Premiership title will enjoy getting into the new group format. But it's not the worst news, is it? One round. Yeah. See if you know that and then you win the title next season and you prepare as best as you can for that. You don't go in ill-prepared. And I'm talking about near beat on at centre half type stuff, you know, that kind of stuff. I know Ryan shaking his head, uh, exactly. That's what I mean. So you know that from this day forth. So preparation's everything, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good point you make. Like I remember ten years or so ago, Ryan, we had four qualifiers to play. Uh I think maybe even one season we made it through four to make it to the group stage. Um certainly three. This is only going to be one. Um I don't know how you feel, but like my bigger concern here is Celtic's own coefficient, and I think we're 59th. Uh, I looked this up earlier. I think we're 59th in UEFA's club rankings, which to me is quite low for a, a club the size of Celtic, and we're also going to lose that really good Europa League group-topping season we had five years ago next year. 10 points we got that year, so we're basically going to go further down unless we have a stormer next year. That's my bigger c concern, Ryan, that Celtic improve in Europe because it's it's really... Our domestic stuff's been amazing, right? It's been an amazing time to support the club. Europe's been really disappointing, hasn't it? Yeah, but th that would mean the board have to stop treating it like a cash cow and just taking the money and and not really competing. I know they won against Feyenoord, but that was a dead rubber when the league was when the Champions League group stage was effectively finished for Celtic. You know, it was a bit of pride that they got. This is a blessing in disguise, I feel, because it'll force them. I mean, they might do it, they might not do it, but it'll force them to prepare a bit earlier for um for the qualifiers. And you've got to beat these teams in order to really because you, you'll be playing against these sorts of teams given the 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 group state or not the group stage but the the league sort of format these are the teams that you will be playing against anyway so it's good practice and Celtic have got a, a tie to to beat another um similar similarly ranked team um they'd be in the champions route so I'm guessing that the 
the draw could potentially be fav- favourable for Celtic, but I think it's a blessing in disguise out of the and it, it it's just what happens. This is what's going to happen with Scotland. They'll get good results, as Tony said, for a couple of years. They'll then rest on their laurels a bit. I'm not just saying, not just Celtic, not just Rangers, and every other team. Um, I'm not putting any blame on the one on on the one team or whatever. But this is this is just the way it goes. And, you know, the Czech Republic they've got teams that are going quite far, and the the Conference League Celtic don't uh, Scotland don't have that. So it's up to the other teams to maybe push forward in these competitions. You know, maybe Aberdeen could have got out of the group stage. They were unlucky not to, given the results that they got. But, you know, if you can get out of a group, if Celtic can get out of a group, I know Rangers got out of their group. But if there's a bit more of a United approach, then then maybe maybe the, the coefficient can be a bit better. But could be a blessing in disguise, could be not. I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Uh, Keith asking, you know, if we fail to win that qualifier, is that out, is out of Europe entirely? No, um, we'll drop into the Europa League at that stage. So, you know, it could be worse. As you said, it might just be guys that hopefully after next season when we're hopefully in the Champions League, it may just be maybe a few years of the Europa League and, um, you know, that tournament can be valuable as well. But that's all in the... the I'm like you, Hamish. I think Celtic need to address their own coefficient. Yeah. In European record and, and start putting points on the board. Well, you know, what's, just, how how do we do that? What's the what's gone wrong? Is it recruitment? Is it something it's else? Recruitment and pre- preparing, Hamish. Let's be honest. How many times? I mean, I I, I made a flipping comment there about near beat on uh, playing at centre half, but and I know when when Ange Poster Corkler came in and they played a youngster in the qualifiers, didn't they? Uh, Against uh, Dane, Dane Murray, yeah. Dane Murray, New, you know Neuschland from uh, Denmark, you know, and you just say to yourself, well, what's what's the point? You know, you you get in there and and Ange Postecoglou had no time to prepare anything, you know, and uh, so, but again, the club knew they were getting into the Champions League qualifiers, you no know, stuff like that. It's just a real failure uh, on the Celtic board's part to prepare for. The magnitude of such a competition is that if you win the title this season, that there's a recalibration with the Champions League, isn't it? It's a new format. I think mm-hmm. Celtic need to recalibrate too, press the reset button and treat it as a brand new tournament, something that they want to make an impact in. And I think the mood music from Brendan Rodgers is that he wants to do that too. The, the way he's talking to, if they can see this over the line in terms of winning the title, that they do not want to get into this competition ill prepared and embarrass himself as they have done in the Champions League recently. You know, all these statistics about not winning a knockout tie, you know, that, that they don't make pleasant reading. And I think upstairs really do have to take this new uh, Champions League seriously, as seriously as you and I want, want the club yeah. to take it. And I'm not saying be reckless with their financial spending. Yeah, it'd be prudent, but give Celtic, give Celtic the best possible chance. Be the best version of yourself both at home and abroad. And if they can do that, then Celtic will pick up coefficient points because we'll claim scalps, you know, because they can potentially be a good side in this competition. And you just, yeah. year on year, watching them fail, it's, uh, you know, it's soul destroying, I think, for a club of, of Celtic stature. And, yeah, Rangers across the city have made it um, more frustrating because they've, they've you know, without... Correct, huh? I think they've had one really good run, but you know, generally they've outperformed as pretty much every season, apart from the year when they were the worst performing team in Champions League group stage history. Just had to get that in there, everyone. Um, the um, next year, so it's it's going to eight games next year, Champions League, but the Europa League's the exact same. Rather than six European games, uh, we'll have eight, a minimum of eight in the, in the competition proper, and um, those two additional games are basically. Uh, in the Champions League, they'll basically for us be against two of the bottom pot teams. Because obviously in the current format, if we were pot four, we'd play a pot one team, a pot two team and a pot three team. Next season, you'll play two pot one teams, two pot two teams, two pot three teams and two pot four teams, regardless of us being in pot four. So it's a good opportunity for us. Ideally, um, that those should be winnable games for us against other pot four teams if we get there. And if we we take it seriously, but I agree, Tony. It's just it's gone on long enough, right, and um, yeah. people talk it. People talk about it as being like, oh, but 
you know, if you put more effort into Europe, like, would you give up the domestic success for more success in Europe? Um, they're the they're the same thing, are they not? In terms of like, if you if you progress to be good in Europe, you'll be better domestically as well. So, and that was a big hope. That was a big hope this summer when Rodgers came in, and it's not happened for whatever reason. Listen, for me at the moment, it's win the league, and then hopefully, if we do that in the summer, then we we start to build. Ryan, have you got anything else to say, or are you okay if we move on to other things? I'm okay if we move on, but I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how the new Swiss league uh, model plays out. I've played it on Football Manager. I kind of know what it's like, but it'll be interesting yeah. to see it in actual real life as well. Yeah, um, I'm already regretting bringing this up and I've not even done it yet. Craig wondering if we want to talk about Joey Barton and Greg Taylor. can be a quick no if you want. I mean, he was moaning about Greg Taylor, I think, the other day. To be honest, I've got Joey Barton mute- muted now on Twitter and I don't actually want to talk about him at all, but um, he was slagging off Greg Taylor and I just like, for a guy who couldn't even look Scott Brown in the, the eyes before the derby, I thought it was a bit rich, but anything to add, guys, just because Craig brought it up. I think he's an absolute non-story, to be honest, and he has well, been Craig? for months. No, 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 not Craig. <laughs> Craig's a very valued member of a, of the Celtic Way comment section, but just, just on the point of Joey Barton, he likes to punch down the way when he's talking yeah. about people. He's been talking about so many different groups. Um, Greg Taylor seems to be the latest one. Um, you know, Greg Taylor's probably done more in a month than 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 Joey Barton did in his whole time in Scotland, to be honest. So, yeah, it was a bit of an odd one. Um, he's really made himself unemployable with co- with comments like that. It's not his worst comments. I've seen worse from, him, but you know, he's he's very unemployable at the moment. Yeah. Uh, right. Tomorrow. Hey, we should got... only address something here in the comment section. There's a guy called Plunge sure. McNugget who I blocked by mistake and accident, and I've apologised for this, and I've said it on air on this pod, and people are saying unblock him. I believe, Ryan, you told him he was unblocked the other day, so he's not Uh, blocked. He's in the comments now. (laughs) Yes, thank you, Plunge. plunge. Uh, And I apologise again for that. So, guys, it it was a mistake because we were getting lots of comments, 10 to the dozen, and I tried to block somebody who was uh, swearing on the channel, didn't support Celtic, and I hit the, the wrong button because they go up very, very quickly and plunge, copped it. So, yeah, just uh, lots of people having their say there. But, yeah, it's uh, glad you're back, Plunge. Thanks for coming back. As I say, I apologise. It's They go fast and furious. Hamish will tell you as he's looking yes. down the, the comment section here. Yeah. As for Joey Barton, I think we move on, eh? <laughs> yep, happy yeah. to do that. Uh, yes, right. Um, tomorrow we've got St Mirren. Celtic are doing that, um, is it like a coaching convention again this week when budding coaches of all levels and ages, nationalities can turn up at Lennox Town and watch training and hear from Brendan Rodgers. Um, you might remember it with, with Ange Postacoglu this time last year. And yesterday, uh, those on the course got a chance to watch training. And I've seen it reported by a number of people now. Uh, I've seen uh, you know the same things reported that Dyson Maida wasn't tr- in training yesterday. Now, I should point out this is the kind of thing we wouldn't normally hear about. And it, it's not necessarily an injury, Tony. It's not necessarily a fitness concern. But Maida wasn't there um i guess we have to read something into that <laughs> yeah i guess it's like when when these players don't uh, feature or it was like last week when ryan said we'll see what happens when Callum mcgregor's picture the training and then he was picture the training and everybody said right he's going to play you yeah. know so might that might be on a on an engagement or, or whatever but i wouldn't read too much into it it didn't seem Injured last week, did he at all when he was yeah. doing his, the full his game. thing at Ibrox? Yeah, so uh, um, as I say, it's, you, you can take these things at face value or you don't. But I, I'd still like to think, like what you said the other day, that I don't think the team will deviate too much from the one that started at Ibrox. I'd like to think Maida would be there. Uh, do I read too much into these things? Not particularly. But we will find out at quarter to two tomorrow. Something, something like that, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's 
they're a good talker, aren't they? It always gets uh, social media buzzing, doesn't it? Yeah, um, smell the glove, pointing out Dyson was at the Barbers. And given his recent <laughs> record, we wouldn't uh, be too surprised at that. Maybe he's going to come out with a big afro or something like that this weekend. Um, if he's not there, Ryan, and it's a big if, uh, but it's a question we've got to ask. Who who, who are your wingers tomorrow? Oh, that's given that Lu- Lewis, Palma, <laughs> Lewis Palma is yeah, back, yeah. apparently. The easy ones for you, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm asking that. you in a minute, Tony. <laughs> I think it'll be I think it'll be Lewis Palmer, to be honest, if he is back in full training. He's was arguably Celtic's best player <laughs> Tony growling at the screen. He's one of one of Celtic's best players in the first half of the season when you look at his numbers. So maybe the break has needed him. His injury break. I know I know it's been a um he's not been playing, he's he's had that injury since before the international break, but Maybe maybe it has done him good and he's had that chance to refresh. Um, he's, he's certainly very very busy on Instagram. That's for sure. He loves a he loves a selfie or two. It always comes up on my feed. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to see him come back refreshed and, and ready for the running because I think he can be an important player for Celtic. I know he blows hot and cold, but he is capable of the of the absolute extraordinary as well. You look at that goal that he scored at Dingwall against Ross County. Um, goal against Atletico Madrid. Um, should have scored against Lazio, but you know the the goal get given for a, offside quite rightly. But you know it was disappointing at the time. He's a player for big moments, and I just think in this at the end of the season where big moments are going to be required from players, he could be a player to step up and really make a difference. Yes, Dyson Maida will be the starter most weeks, but if you got a player like Lewis Palmer that can come on and, and make an impact and really because he'll be hearing all the negativity about him as well. He'll be he'll be hearing that. You know, he had a good start, and then and then fans have maybe not not got on his back, but they've they've not appreciated these subpar performances in recent months. He'll be like, if I can really change this about, then I can really make myself a hero going into my second season at the club. He can still have a massive impact on this season if he um, if he if he pulls his socks up and basically gets hard at work. Uh, Joe just bringing up the, the let's not rush players back. We already get CCV Hatati McGregor still relatively fresh from coming back. We need to monitor this, just take our time with Palma. That's one part of it, and the big part for me is that he's coming back from an injury. Um, it was a muscle injury as well, wasn't it, guys? So yeah. I'm not sure I would start him because of that. I, I, to be honest, if he was fully fit and given his recent form, I'd have question marks as well. For me, it would be uh, Kuhn. And Yang, my big question, Tony, would be, can one of them play on the left? And if so, who would it be most likely to be? I believe Kuhn can play there, but I like him cutting in from the right. Yeah, but I'd probably ask Kuhn to do it, to be fair. Uh, But listen, you've also got James Forrest there too. Yeah, yeah. You know, experience uh, will guide you through the next few games, and lots of people were saying that rather than Yang come on at Ibrox, they would have preferred James Forrest in hindsight, granted. But I, I think, see, games like this are possibly tailor-made for the likes of Forrest, who can make a contribution if someone like Dyson Maida doesn't make it. And uh, and Forrest has been a big game contributor for Celtic for a long, long time, and consistently. So you, you kind of can't ignore that. And just, just his experience and his wealth and knowledge of handling these occasions and, and being around, you know, it, that counts for a lot, especially in run-ins when you can, you know, turn to guys like that and maybe say, look, can you give us X amount of minutes? You know, can you do me a turn? And that's kind of thing. So, and bearing in mind, Brennan Rodgers still rates him because he said he was the best winger at the club, didn't he? I believe yeah, yeah. at some point earlier this season. So, he's clearly doing something to sort of be in and around the fringes and you know, it's, it's that kind of, look, you might not play a lot for me, but always be ready for me when I when I call Nashi. Uh, and, you know, so you might see somebody like that tomorrow. Preference would probably be for Kuhn and Yang, Kuhn on the left, Yang on the right. But I don't think either of them covered themselves in glory at Ibrox, did they? So maybe that's why I'm thinking that Rogers might turn to somebody like Forrest and say, Do you know what, I trust you to give me an hour tomorrow against St Murnau or whatever, come on for half an hour or 45 or, or whatever. So, you know, you've still got options there. With Palma, I'm kind of... Uh, I fell out with Palma after that penalty incident and, you know, his eyes laughing there, you know, just really, really got in my wick, you know. But uh, 
And again, you nurse him back, you give him some minutes if you're in the position to do that. But I thought his attitude was stinking after that penalty missing. And uh, I, I just, I can't be having that. And if a guy's on Instagram and all that and doing all sorts of stuff, great, fantastic. How about doing some talking on the pitch and getting back to the Palmer that kind of came at first and wanted and was hungry to make that impression? You know, and then kind of hit some kind of comfort zone. And uh, as I say, a wee downer on him because of the penalty, not because he missed it once, but because he tried the exact same penalty again and and messed it up. And you say to yourself, you know, that's all down to your attitude. And, you know, uh, your injury and being left out of the side and an important ma- matches maybe have taught you something. It's, going to t- it's a long road back to get back into that team. So you have to do something to impress. And if you're fortunate enough to get minutes, then you have to perform. I must say, I, 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 this is horrendous, but I, I actually had forgotten about James Forrest um, because he's not really been an option to start matches recently. And I think it's he's clearly still got something to offer, certainly off the bench. Um, yeah. And when you mentioned James Forrest, I just wonder, because he can definitely play on the left. Oof, I think he still yeah. prefers the right, but he can definitely do it. I'm not sure if Yang... Has played there really? Has he? He has. He's played four has games he? this season on the left. I had a wee okay. look on his uh, transfer mark page, so he can play on the left. That is definitely an avenue that Celtic could go down. I'm sure that Curran could play on the left as well. It's just about all uh, who's maybe better on their weaker foot, who can play down that side better than the other. But if you want, if you want directness, then then play Yang and Curran. But you know, it's not as if, and I know there's been talk about his muscle injury, but Palmer's been training for two weeks now. He's, I know it's different playing an actual game, but he's, he was training last week. I know he didn't make the bench, but Rogers did actually make a point in saying that he was fit in training as a clean bill of health. So if he comes on, and I, I'm sure he'll be ready to, to face whatever challenges he'll have at left wing, but... I'm just I'm I'm looking forward. I, I think I just think he'll be fired up, Palmer. I think he'll be fired up and willing to prove people wrong a bit, um, which is which I think is good. If he can channel that in the right way, then I, I think it, it could be a really solid end to the season for him. He's got magic in his boots. It's just that magic isn't always there all the time, and he's a he, he's a stereotypical winger. He's, he'll infuriate you, but he'll amaze you at the same time. Sometimes even in the same game, I don't think he's. As direct as the other two, Yang and Yang and Kuhn would love to get to the byline and beat their man and try and get across into the box. Palmer's a bit different. He'll shoot from distance. He'll <clears throat> maybe try and get a pass going. You know, you'll get that pass to Matt O'Reilly at the Tyne Castle. Different options. James Forrest is also an option. He's a goal scorer. You know that he's going to be calm on the ball. He'll hardly give up possession, and and you know that he's a he's a reliable player. So the good thing is, <laughs> even though it looks as if Maeda isn't fit because he wasn't training yesterday and you would assume that he wouldn't make the weekend there's options, it's not as if it's a it's a catastrophe, a disaster if if, if Maeda isn't in, because he, he has, yes he scored at Ibrox but he isn't the most prolific pl- player in the world you can find better goal scorers than him in and around the team so yes you'd miss his work rate but do you really need that work rate against St Murden at home I wouldn't think so Perish the thought you could go two up front with Kyogo Anita and do what? But what wing backs? Three five two? Yeah, or a not? diamond in midfield? Yes, yes. You know, it's leave that up to the manager. But uh, you know, you've got two you'd have two goal scorers there. Just about getting mm. the supply to them, isn't it? Mm. To be fair. Kyogo can also play in the left wing too. Yeah. Oh. So. I thought, thought we'd nearly made it through. <laughs> Nobody in the comments mentioned Kyogo in the left, and then you did he's it, right? He's played there with the play major, up front. Major. I know, I know, I know. I know. Um, <laughs> he's played the majority of his career on the left wing. He can play there. It, not that I want him to play there, but he can play there. Yeah. Disappointed. <laughs> Disappointed. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, on McGregor, because McGregor's... Um, uh, apparently took uh, part in the like the warm up of training, but not uh, but didn't take part in like the ball or the contact stuff at the end. So uh, I don't think he's going to start, is nah. he? Based based <laughs> off that. No. <laughs> no. No. Why did he play last week then? If that's the case, if he, if he can only take part in some form or, of training, is it last week? Is 
supposed to put him back a little bit. I'd hope, hope that not. wasn't the case because that would be that would be poor management if that is I the case. I, 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 I think last week was sentimentality and optics. You needed your captain. You know, I correct Ryan, and I don't think it's right. I'm not going to have a pop at the manager in in that sense, but I think that was the wrong call. He wasn't fit. He showed that he wasn't fit, and he contributed to the the equalising goal, which made it two each. And uh, but I think players are sometimes their own worst enemy. He would have told the manager that he was all right and he was good for half an hour. So, you know, I think that there was there was a but sentiment attached to that substitution, can I say? And he was your captain and he wanted to play some part. And it was clear and obvious when he came on after five or ten minutes looking at him that he just wasn't a hundred percent or he was nowhere near it. And so yeah, uh, if he's nowhere near it, these are important games. He can't be starting against St Mum. That's my thoughts. And if that's put him back, then obviously and is is what I, I based my opinion on the fact that he was asked if about his injury and he said it would need to be managed for the rest of the season and I thought he isn't there yet. Probably shouldn't have played. So uh, I know we wanted him to play, but there's a difference between wanting him to play. But I only said I wanted him to play if he was a hundred percent fit. And from that display at Ibrox, it's clear that he wasn't. And from what you're seeing from the training ground, it's clear that he isn't. So you can't risk him in games of this magnitude. Bottom line tomorrow is the result. If something special happens, they're saying that they can run up some a, a decent score. So be it. That's a bonus. But you need to win this football match. So a water would be in for you guys in the midfield yeah. again. Say, say midfield, Iwata, Hitati, O'Reilly. And in some ways I'm quite delighted about that because I think he's deserved this run in the team since he joined the club, Iwata, and I've been desperate to see him over a good run of games, 8, 9, 10, 11 games in a row. <clears throat> I, I I just thought that he was so, so unlucky with the way that Ange Postacoglu signed him. He had that start to the season. I thought this was going to be the breakout season. Obviously, Ange Postacoglu left. Brendan Rodgers came in. He's also had injuries. Now it seems as if he's become one of he's become one of Brendan Rodgers' most trusted players, and he can play game upon game. And I'm delighted for him. You know, he's in the prime of his career at 27 years old. He can clearly do a job, and I think he'll be there for, from now until the end of the season. If there is that injury that's getting managed, then McGregor will probably pick and choose his games of what what to start and what games to maybe come off the bench. If that's the case, then Awata is going to be a mainstay from now until the end of the campaign, which I've got absolutely no problems with, because I think he's been one of Celtic's best players recently. Um, and yeah, I'm just delighted that he's he's got this extended run in the team, because he never lets his side down. Yes, he's not flashy whatsoever, but he gets the job done, and I, and I, I quite like him, both as, a, both as a football player and as an individual, the way he cuts about the pitch and, and, and does his business. I wouldn't be averse to rewarding Bernardo either. For mm-hmm. his cameo last week, you know, you could go four, you know, and play Hitati wide left of a midfield with Bernardo Iwata and O'Reilly. A diamond. Get your, get your two up front, right? Ida and Kyogo. It's, a, it's an option. I'm not saying it will happen. I would like to see it tried at some point, but I, I, I love what Bernardo brought. Uh, as I said, I mentioned it the other day about the pass to Ida for that goal. I, I just thought it was, it was a real cool head. At a, a critical moment, you know, Rangers had just scored and the place was absolutely jumping. And your man's picked out an exquisite pass. He's, the manager said, Great weight. You know, all he has to do is take a touch and get it out of his feet and, and bang it's in the net. So, you know, you know what I'm like in terms of, you know, he finished the game and he finished it strongly. So, he, and you look at Bernardo and put him in that situation and he showed he can be trusted. He scored a cracker against Rangers earlier as well. And, Hit a wee purple patch. So there's things there in Bernardo that you think fine. You know, so uh, I'm not averse to that either. Uh, if he if he fancied doing that, if the manager fancied doing that, the great thing again to talk about it is we've got options in there. Mm. We can do things, you know. Uh, and I, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I will see either and Kyogo up front <laughs> together uh, starting, but it's something I'd still like to see at some point, but uh, I'm, I'm holding my breath on that one, but you know, Adam Eda came on and scored a crack and goal and made a contribution too, so 
I, as I say, you just have to get the ball to the front men and they'll score, whoever that is, basically. Yeah, I mean, potentially for me, the subs tomorrow, you're looking at Bernardo being one, Ida being one, Palma being one, sorry, Ryan, um, <laughs> McGregor being one, and uh, James Forrest being one, potentially. And, and you know, that suddenly shows you where the squad's at and how it's come on. Uh, right, okay. Um, Maestro saying the boys need to be up for it and go hard from the start. No messing. Uh, AR making the exact same point. We need 100 mile an hour start on Saturday. The nerves will start. I agree. Um, I enjoyed this one. I don't know if Dave's serious or not. I'm going to say that he's not. Dundee should play their home game against Rangers at Parkhead. Yeah, good crowd out for that. 60,000 of us cheering on Dundee for that one. Uh, that's a situation that will resolve itself next week, probably. Uh, four points clear if we win tomorrow, guys. You guys will be doing videos probably later on after the press conference as well. Uh, before and after tomorrow's game as well. You never stop, do you? Yep, just like just like the predecessor at Celtic, we never stop with our videos. We've got the press conference one, um, maybe about five or six o'clock today or tonight, um, and then we've got the pre and post match pre, which will be just after the teams are announced, so we can go and do the graphic, and then after, which will be about an hour or so after the game once everything's on the website. So join us for those free shows this weekend. Perfect. Uh, just a final shout out for this offer. We've got six months of access for the Celtic Way for £1 plus a free Kyogo Furuhashi print from renowned football artist made by Frankie. Guys, thanks again. Uh, keep tuning in to the guys over the weekend. Plenty to talk about. I'll be back on Monday.